Hey everybody, welcome to the Energy News Beat Podcast. My name's Stu Totley, President and CEO of the Sandstone Group. We've got an action-packed podcast for you today. I'm kind of having some serious fun. I'm here in Midland, Odessa, and I'm here at the... Uh, I'm sitting here talking to Larry, Larry Richards. I'm at the Permian Basin International Oil Show, and I'm having an absolute blast. And also joining me here is the Ray Trevino, and I mean, Ray is one of them EMP operators. He's out there drilling oil for our wonderful low-cost energy for the United States. And I'll tell you what, Larry, you're the president of this great show. Tell us about what you got going on here and tell us about the show. Oh, thank you so much for the opportunity. Uh, no, we're, we're incredibly excited about this year's show. We've got over 750 exhibitors uh, from all over the United States, from all over the world. Wow. Um, 1,100 uh, exhibit spoofs uh, sold out again this year. We're very blessed to, to be sold out, but we anticipate over 25,000 attendees over our three days. Whoa. Uh, and you know, over the last five to seven years, and you can attest to this, right? The Permian Basin has become the center for innovation and technology for our entire industry. Oh, you, you know, bet. 20 years ago, when I was starting my career, all the innovation happened deep water offshore and international. That's right. right. And the last five to seven years, all the major technolo technology breakthroughs for our industry have happened within 150 miles of where we're standing. And there's wow. no better place to see that new tech than right here. You know, what's kind of cool is the $60 billion Exxon deal. Um, you know, you sit back and take a look. Permian's going to be here a while. Why would any oil and gas company invest in the Permian Basin for $60 billion unless it was really important? No, absolutely. And, and you know, the hard work that the men and women in the Permian Basin do, you know, allows every American to have a standard of living our great-grandparents couldn't have dreamed of. Oh, yes. And, and you know, for them to, to be able to come here, put their hands on the absolute latest, greatest tech anywhere in the, in the, in the world, uh, and be part of that. We're just, we're proud. We have a, the show is done completely with, uh, 150 industry leaders that volunteer their time as our board of directors. Wow. Uh, every committee, uh, that we've got out here working the show are all volunteers. And I think that's a big part of our success. They're industry leaders. They know how hard it is to break away. They want to make sure if somebody takes yep. the time to come here or send their employees here, they're going to get a big bang for their buck. Yes. And, and, you know, get a return on that investment. And we've been able to, to do that for a long number of years. And I think this year we're how many years? knocking the cover off the ball since 1940. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Every other year for two, you know, we do, it's not every year. It's right. a, it's a biannual. Uh, but the show started in 1940. Um, it was postponed uh, for a couple of shows during the middle of World War II right. for all the men and women in the area to, to go fight for our country uh, and has been running ever since. Ever since. Wow. You know, hey, RT, uh, tell yeah. us, uh, you know, uh, ask the next question. I'm sorry. You know how podcasters no, are. No, well, you know, first of all, thank you for having us at the Permian Basin International All Show. And quick shout out to Air Compressor Solutions uh, for having us uh, here at their booth this week or this week. Um, okay. I mentioned them, and you mentioned the rich history in 1940. Air Compressor Solutions, they say they've had this booth for almost 40 years. Wow. I mean, let's talk about the lineage of all the different companies out here that have their spot reserved. And I've even heard rumors that if you drop off of it, there's already a waiting list for others. Is that true? Yeah, that is true. And and we've been very blessed in that regard. You know, our honoree, uh, Mr. Dick Sibbles, um, who just given so much to our industry and to our local community, um, his company out here builds all types of production equipment. Uh, he shared with us yesterday during our luncheon for him. Uh, they've had a booth out here since 1951. Wow. Uh, and so, you know, it's just, it's amazing the legacy of, of these different companies. But then, you know, we also have brand new startup companies, you know, that mm -hmm. are bringing artificial intelligence and machine learning and integrating right. it with these companies. And so it's a real cool mix. Yes. Uh, and even the, the legacy companies, they're bringing, you know, their, absolute newest tech out here. Several of our, our biggest pieces of equipment out here, the technology that's driving those pieces of equipment didn't exist two years ago at our oh, show. You bet. And, and it's just amazing to see that kind of innovation, you know, and, and go actually be able to touch it. And and if it's a, a client out here that, that wants to go put it in the field, you know, nine times out of 10, they can have it loaded on a truck and, and 
headed to their field wherever it is across the United States next month. Well, you say that, you know, there's so much equipment out here that's literally on display that's not only, well, that's also active, you know, like, hey, let's try it out right now. You got drilling rigs set up, cranes set up, right. uh, generators here. I mean, you've got just equipment everywhere, uh, even trucks for sale out here and, and lease. Um, so I, I understand and I see where all the other oil and gas shows this is the standard. This this is the standard for every other ga oil and gas show in the nation and in the world. And well, it's just awesome. Well, we're we're sure trying to be. Like I said, we know how how busy everybody is, but for the onshore oil and gas industry, um, this is the leading trade show in the United right. States, which makes it the leading one in the world. I mean, I've, for my companies, I've exhibited um, all over the world at you know different trade show type events, and, right? And, and the Permian Basin International Oil Show was always our best return on investment. Yes. And and uh, I think it continues that for companies today. And it's a, a place okay. that people can come and see whether it's, you know, reducing uh, emissions uh, like what uh, Air Compressor yes. Solutions does where, you know, all of the pneumatics that typically were utilizing the methane gas off the separator to, to actuate all those small pneumatics, and but they release it to the air, can now do it with compressed air, like yes. what their technology is bringing to the, and that's, you know, spreading wow. everywhere across the Permian. Uh, and and the, the generational jumps in this technology to handle these late, this newest generation of well, right. um, it, it's just a really cool time to be in our industry. Do you think the um, AI... The new technology is one of the reasons that we could go from 1,200 rigs to down to 700 and then down even more. And this is the year that the Permian's kicking out more oil than anything else. It's got to yeah. be tech, right? We will we will have the, the largest oil and gas production in history out of the Permian this year. Right. Uh, but but a lot of that is, is tech. A lot of it is the new technology on how these wells are being drilled. But that's what's spurning all these new companies and all this new technology. Right. You know, now... We used to go horizontal, I mean, vertically, and, and you frack out to the side, you perp it and frack it, and, and you've got kind of a Christmas tree looking deal. Now we're going down a mile. We're going horizontally <laughs> two miles. Yeah. We're putting a football field worth of sand into a form into a shale formation. Yeah. It's non-permeable rock that we're making into a permeable formation. And they're coming in at 1,500 barrels a day of oil. Yeah. And, but when they come, they come back really high pressure with a lot of sand. It's like mm -hmm. having a... Uh, you know, oil sandblaster on all your equipment up top. Yep. And it's taken us five or six years to figure out how to produce those wells and complete them in the most cost effective. It's a great problem to have because you've right. got a lot of volume, uh, but it causes a lot of engineering and technical issues right. that now all these companies out here are solving. Mm -hmm. And now we're five to seven years ahead of anywhere else in the world. So all the other national oil companies everywhere else are coming to the Permian yep. trying to understand how we're doing it. So they don't have mm -hmm. to learn that in the middle of, Algerian yeah. desert or, you know, <laughs> anywhere in, halfway across the world. You know, RT, the best deals that the investors are seeing out there, and I, let me ask this, because yeah. in the um, Bloomberg, when they were talking about that gigantic deal, they were saying that the next move for M&A in the uh, Permian is looking for PDP and existing production mm -hmm. because of, just, Larry, just what you said. And I'm sorry, I get just as excited yeah. as you. It's because going in and reworking those wells with the new technology is pretty cool because you're doing that in all your fields. We are. We're doing it in our fields also, but also out here in, in West Texas with the, with the new technology that, that Larry uh, you know talks about and that's all out here. Some of these tier two and tier three well sites on, on uh, out there could actually now become tier one locations just because of great? the technology that we have now to extract those hydrocarbons from the ground and uh, so it's just so exciting and again you know the big deal you know uh with Exxon purchasing Pioneer, that just if that doesn't motivate you know West Texas to to, to continue on and, and drill baby drill for the next hundred years, I don't know what does, right, Larry? Oh, very true. And it's funny some of these these fields. My dad, you know, had a, a fifty year career in the oil and gas industry, um, but in the nineteen sixties, he was area superintendent for Getty Oil Company in Andrews, oh, right oh, north wow. of here. Cool. And and uh, some of the fields that or some of our most prolific fields. My dad would have told you, you know, they were mostly drilled out in the 60s, yeah. you know, but the new technology has yeah. opened up all these different reserves. We knew the oil was there. We just couldn't get it out of the rock. Yeah. And now there's with these new ways, but it's spurning so much innovation across the industry <laughs> and opportunities for new startup companies, even, you know, that, that are coming out with products. And two years later, it's an industry standard for that little niche yeah. because 
they're solving a problem that didn't exist before. How do we get the next generation in here? Because you got a museum over here. Oh, but right. how do we get the next generation excited? Because of AI, the techno group. Uh, I'm a techno goob. Right. I mean, I, that's an honor, you know, now that you could be a, a nerd, um, you know, I'm proud of myself. <laughs> I'm a legend in my own mind. Yeah, we're proud of you too. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. I just <laughs> legend in my own mind. RT knows that, but it's the next generation of oil guys. Uh, we need them. And you just nailed it with the AI. That's how we get people excited about the oil and gas industry. That's how we do it. Yeah. Right. I, I agree with that. I also think we've got to tell our story because we have an amazing story to tell. You know, right. I, I shared with some some folks um, in our opening ceremony. We had a bunch of young people there, you know, with the bands and all the stuff that's part of opening ceremonies. But but, you know, in 2023, about eight percent of the world's population lives in abject poverty. Absolutely. It defines it about less than two dollars a day. But before the Drake well, the Drake well was drilled. Back 200 years, 1823, eight out of 10 humans on the planet lived in abject poverty and had wow. every hundred years before that. And and having low cost hydrocarbon energy available to everyone for transportation and climate control and all the things we use it. And then you add to that 55% of our global food production comes from synthetic uh, uh, from synthetic right. fertilizer from natural gas right. it derived directly from urea and ammonia from natural gas. And nobody talks about the fact that over half our world's food production is coming from our industry. Yeah. Yep. And then I, I told all the young people, I said, from the time you woke up this morning and hit your alarm clock and you got your toothbrush, brush your teeth and you shave your face or your ladies did their <laughs> legs and you drove here or you rode a bicycle here. I said, from the time you did it, everything, 90% of what you touched was built with petrochemicals. Yeah. And and our industry, all the hardworking men and women who get up in the it dark felt. every morning to go to work, that you know, that's you need to thank them yeah. Yeah. because the standard of living you live, your great grandparents could have dreamed of. Heck no! And and I hope I think most of our young people don't realize that because they're not ever hearing that. You know, that's funny. I'm visiting with uh, some folks in Africa uh, this afternoon, and uh, also tomorrow morning, the Secretary General of one of the biggest uh, outfits out there. And uh, he is really fighting because the West is taking so many natural resources from Africa and we're, they're forcing in all the renewable energy mm -hmm. and then charging them high interest rates. The World uh, uh, Financial uh, gr Group is in double charging them. You have China doing their Belt and Road Initiative and they're doing it. But let's let the world do low cost energy, get the lowest kilowatt per hour to everybody on the planet. And man, I, I'm going to hug you because that, <laughs> that is that's what it's all about is elevating humanity out of poverty. Ty, you, Ray, you're you're so tired of me saying that. <laughs> no, it's it's what we need to do to, to get out of poverty for the world is, you know, oil and gas and, and really natural gas is that real Absolutely. burning uh, fuel source yeah. yes, exactly. that we can use. You know, I want to jump back to the international side of everybody being here. You know, uh, do you know exactly or about how many different countries you have here at, at the Permian Base International Show this year? Exhibitor wise, we've got them. You know, we have over 20 com uh, companies from Canada, wow. uh, but we've got them from uh, Germany, from the UK, from Italy, nice. from South Korea, from yeah. just a whole litany of, of different exhibitors that are here from around the world. Um, I, I think the biggest you know, and, and we don't keep track, and I wish we did because I've gotten that question. But you know, <laughs> I've been an exhibitor every year until this year. I retired well, this last year, but but um, but as an exhibitor, I was always amazed at all the different places around the world that we had people coming in. Right. This year, I know it's even more. I had old customers of mine call six months ago. And it's like, oh, we saw you're in the, the prison. We want to bring in some of our top executives from Libya, you know, and we had uh -huh. from Guyana, you know, a guy called me and say, hey, I got this group from Guyana that wants to, they found some big reserves in Guyana. They want to come, you know, to Odessa. And I was like, I don't handle hotels. I cannot help you with a hotel, you know, yeah, and I would recommend you get it in the right sense, you know, in yes. about the next 11 minutes if yeah. you want a hotel because they book up, you know, way in advance. But, but it's just been so cool. The outreach I've just got on LinkedIn and different things, so, you know, as we prepare for the show from people coming from from overseas yes, sir. to try to to see what we're doing here and, and take that innovation and take it back with them. Well, that is so cool. Uh, so you're only the president for this year. Yes, sir. Correct. Okay. I've been I, on the board for a little over 20 years, but okay. we we uh, we 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 work and it is a working board. You're not on this. 
it's not a resume deal. It's a if you're going to be on the board of directors of the oil show, you're going to work. And uh, but but we we uh, have our whole team, and then then you can move up to an exec board, and then yeah, they were. I was honored to be selected as the president this year. Fantastic. And now, uh, RT, as soon as I mention oil, you go. Ding! You're yeah. on point. You're like a hound dog on point. Boom! And I, I'm sitting here going, "Let's talk about the show." Your eyes, it, folks, for our podcast listeners, Larry's eyes are just—they're wide open. His physical body is just going nuts. He's excited. He's excited. And and so I see RT when he's doing his podcast, The Crude Truth. He's doing the same thing, and his yeah. guests are kind of like, "What kind of guy do I got interviewing me?" And and so it's so fun to see your enthusiasm. So it is an outstanding congratulations and i know you're gonna just go to nap for three years after you're done here <laughs> yeah this is what a show yeah it's been a great show and it means so much you know for our community and for these local companies because because you have people coming from all over they're able to diversify their revenue streams so when we hit a cycle yeah. you know they're picking up customers internationally they're picking them up all over the the, the country and so they can weather those cycles so much more effectively. It yeah. just it's it's a win win for everybody. No, it, it really is. And again, you know, this show has just been so amazing. And, and congratulations! And and now I actually want to uh, bring in the owner, president, CEO of Air Compressor Solutions, it's Brian Stubb. A long time ago. <laughs> Sorry about that, <laughs> Brian. How are you doing this morning? Awesome. And uh, the sun's up. It's not hot yet. It's a good day. It is a good day. <laughs> uh, thank you so much again for allowing us to be here with you guys uh, at this booth. And uh, what a heck of a team you've yes. got here. And I'm I'm not gonna lie. This is probably one of the better spots right here of the entire show. Is this right here up front? Is where you are at as everybody comes. But here. you might know this better than I do. I think we've had this same booth for like forty years. Yeah. I think that's, that's what the previous owner told me. This is this is like part of the purchase of the company. Exactly. You get the, yeah. You get the international <laughs> show booth. I told somebody yesterday. I said I think some of the, the transactions that have happened, uh, uh, at least part of the multiple was based on their booth space. It, no, it was <laughs> part of the conversation for <laughs> sure. Do I get the booth space? Are you keeping the booth space? <laughs> So we are very excited to be here. Hey, Larry, I, I just moved the camera over here and got a shot of your truck. Oh, the old and, truck. And then I move, I'm moving it back. So tell us about your truck. Um, Actually, that truck uh, came out of uh, my uncle restored these trucks. And uh, I was able to get that about a, six, eight months ago. Um, And the petroleum museum here in town actually had that old air compressor in wow. their shop. And they didn't have a use for it. Um, so we were able to get that from the air compressor. And so everything on that truck is from the 1930s. Wow. That's uh, awesome. I did not know that. So the jackhammers are from the 30s. There's three jackhammers. And then uh, we have just started a fabrication group at ACS. And our fabrication group made the skid um, that goes in the back. And we tried to make that look like one of our modern service trucks as close as we could. <laughs> so... <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, Pete, that if, if that's not a conversation starter, I don't know what is. Right. So we can send it out to jobs. We it goes about twenty five miles an hour. We'll be there. We'll be there when we get there. Um, if it's an emergency, don't call that truck. But it's a good thing he showed up because I already sold it for a hundred k. Yeah, I've had a few offers. I was gone a little bit yesterday, and I think I, I'm super impressed. It's still here for, for a podcast listeners. Uh, he just went and spit everywhere. So yeah. I mean, he was like, "No, you didn't sell yeah. my truck." Yeah. Yeah. He's like, "You did what?" About to bring it to my eye. Yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, you know, Brian, uh, for this being, again, y'all have been doing this now for almost half a century. Yes. You know, what is one of the things that really sticks out to you with the Permian Basin International Oil Show? It's actually a neat thing. We've talked about this, you know, when it's cold or oil's bad, we still do it. And it really is, again, we have a great, great booth space, but it's about getting our brand out there. Um, again, even if we don't talk to anybody, people see the brand, they see us, they remember us. Um, again, people come up and say, hey, yeah, we were here two years ago. You're still in the same booth. Good to see you. And then two weeks later, they give us a call. So it really is just about being visible. Um, and the oil show does a great job um, with advertising, you know, the month leading up to it, um, collecting leads. They do a great job of all that kind of stuff. And it is really just getting the brand out there. Um, everybody still knows we're around when we're at the oil show, um, which is always good. Um, and like I said, we can do social media and that kind of stuff, but there's nothing like just having your brand in front of your customer's face. Absolutely. Um, and it's a big payoff every year. So. Yeah. And it's, it's fantastic for us because they're bringing the technology that our attendees need to see, yeah. you know, right. for example, you know, this type of unit where you're, you're using, um, compressed air versus yep. the natural gas off a separator. Historically, we had air compressors on location, mm -hmm. but they were not driving anything vital. They were doing, you know, so 
everybody from a field standpoint thinks, oh, it's an air compressor, you know, it doesn't, you know, whether it runs or not. Well, now they're replacing the separators, which means every time the dumps go to the tanks, whether it's oil, whether it's water, everything else, everything's being driven by that that air. Yep. And so it cannot go down or you have oil overflowing a tank or you have produced water on the ground and then your life gets incredibly exciting <laughs> yes. in ways you do not want. In, in a, a short period of time. In a very short period of time. <laughs> but, but, but that's the, all of a sudden you're, you're tying in all kinds of um, high tech and automation and everything else into these type systems to where you can put them out and you're hundred percent sure they're going to be reliable. Yep. Right. And, and so, you know, but that didn't exist five years ago before we started trying to replace every pneumatic, right. we just tied them into a separator yep. and they were using the natural gas. But every time that little, you know, instrument would move, it would spit a little tiny bit of methane in it. We've eliminated that with this type of technology, but it That's has cool. to run and That's it has fun. to be, you know, and then all the young engineers want to see on their phone, whether That's, it's running or not. That's, what, all the, that that's what this one is. You can see this on your phone. Isn't that cool? Um, but that's, that's where we've gone this year is we started making these in-house. We've made that skid in-house now. Uh, we're doing, we have an IME group, two yeah. guys, but we have an IME group that's growing. Um, and so the customer hooks up electricity and then they hook up a Cat5 cable and they're able to get eight channels of data and they can know the pressure. They know how long it's running. They know if it's got any faults and they can look at it in their office or on their phone. Yeah. And who would have ever thought you need that in an air compressor? In air compressor. No fair. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> um, But it's been an awesome project. Again, the team's done a great job. Uh, customers have been really receptive to it, and it's just a neat deal to see yeah, how integrated air compressors are now to groups. Yeah, and, 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 and you've got this on the emission control side, and then you've got all this stuff for water recycling yes. and yeah. reuse out here. You've got all this new technology that's that's now using stranded natural gas for the big iron, yep. 500 yes. horsepower and above. Yep. There's a four megawatt gen set over there that's using, you know, fuel gas. Yes, it's like its own little power plant. Yeah, it's awesome. like, oh, I mean, it's just, like I said, it's a cool time to be out here. It is. A lot of new tech. L lots of neat stuff to go look at, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> that, that is for sure. And, you know, Brian, you, know, you mentioned here that uh, there for a minute ago, you go, yeah, I'll meet somebody here. And then two weeks later, they call you. You know, what What are all the services that you guys are doing here at Air Compression Solutions? Well, um, I tell everybody, mostly when I talk to bankers and stuff, because they don't know what we do in the oil field right. half the time. <laughs> um, just, that's that. my job now. I just talked to bankers all day. Um, but, you, you know, really, we I, I equate ourselves to a car dealership. So, But we do air compressors and we do generators. So we have a, a group of salesmen that go out and sell them. Uh, we sell parts for them. We uh, have a service group that does service at our shop here in Odessa um, and our other locations. And uh, we actually have field techs that go out in the field. Uh, we have a rental fleet. So if you need one overnight, you need one for a couple of weeks, uh, plants down, plant maintenance, we can rent you one. Um, and then now we started a fabrication group. So now we can actually modify them and specialize them for what the customer needs. Uh, we uh, are actually opening up our fifth branch. So we have a branch. Our main location is here in Odessa. We've got a branch in Amarillo, Albuquerque, and El Paso, and we're opening up one in Carlsbad as we speak. So wow. uh, we do that all over the place. You know, uh, Larry and Stu, uh, this man has done nothing but covid has, has just continued to rise, but we're not doing it again. We're not right. doing it again. <laughs> it wasn't easy. Exactly. Wait a minute. Did you just say he had COVID? No, 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 not, no not, not right now. No, that, no, no, but during that whole time from 2020 on, uh, you know, air compressor solutions, had nothing, he's done nothing but continue to grow. And I also need to say thank you to, uh, Brian here because uh, being a sponsor, I called him up when I yeah. first started my show, The Crude Truth, and I go, Hey, I I'm doing going to do a podcast. Uh, would you like to be a sponsor? You go, sure. What's it about? <laughs> right. Yeah. And they go, what's it about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, would you find me a sponsor? <laughs> and so I, did, I gave him a little bit of info about what it was. He goes, oh, yeah, no problem. So, so, so uh, Brian also, and then yesterday, a couple of his teammates were, how do you know Brian? I said, actually, Brian yeah. turned me down for a job four or five years That's ago. It's been a while. Yeah, five, yeah, five years ago. And, uh, but he has just been to a RC's mentor. credit, he yeah. said, we're going to keep in touch, though. Yes. Right? So, yeah. And, yeah. and we yeah. have. And, and, you know, uh, there at Pecos, you know, I ended up staying there. And, and we've just continued to grow. And and I'll call Brian up every now and then and go, Brian, hey, I've I got, you know, it. just as a mentor. Yeah. And uh, so I can't thank him enough for that. And and awesome. So, yeah, like I said, it probably has been five years. Yeah, uh, yeah it has been five years. Smartest move we ever made. Yeah. Yeah. Not hiring RT. Yeah. <laughs> I'm selfish because I get the work with everything. Well, guys, I cannot thank y'all enough. Larry, 
Thank you so much for this awesome show that we have. Brian, again, I'm humbly thank you so much for allowing us to be here, for being here at man. the show and, uh, and and at your booth. And, uh, you know, hopefully, hopefully, if nothing else, it was nothing but great fellowship and a little bread was broken. Yep. And that's Absolutely. that's what it's about. Absolutely. And as I would say, that's the crude truth. Yes. All right. <laughs> hey, RT, close us out. Tell us how everybody can get. Well, um, everybody, if you uh, uh, get, get here. Is that what you, you said? guys and how yeah, you so, so that's what I was about to say. Let's go down the line. Larry, for those out there that don't know you and want to get in contact with you for the next one in two years or just anything else, how can people get a hold of you? Sure. Go to our website. It's pbioilshow.org. Uh, and if you're coming here today and we've got uh, under the, the frequently asked questions tab, you can go. There's uh, short videos on how to find parking, how to pre-register, <laughs> all kinds of cool stuff. Um, but, but we're still open through, through Thursday of this week. Uh, but they can do all their interface, um, through the, or call the old show office here in Odessa. Okay. But no, we're just, we're, uh, like I said, we're thrilled to do this for the industry. It's the way we get back to the industry and, and, uh, and appreciate the opportunity to talk about it a little bit. And, and I'm saying right. parking is kind of funny. I'm going to interrupt for half sec. I've never seen so many trucks in all my life on curbs, trees. <laughs> uh, so anybody that's a safety man, do not look at their parking lot. <laughs> yes. And Brian, before you go, I just want to do a shout out to Austin Burke. Yep. Uh, your sales uh, uh, guru out over here that just put this whole thing yes. together. Austin did most of the booth uh, this year. He took that over and that's awesome. So, <laughs> it looks good. Well, Brian, how can people get in contact with you? Uh, like I said, we're, we're uh, here in Odessa, Texas on Kermit Highway. You can always stop by the shop, uh, visit us on the internet. It's uh, acsir.com. Um, and then our phone number is 432-335-5900, and we can get you to whatever you need for Presser's Generator. Right, sounds good. Thank you so much for having us here. Thanks and, for coming out. And I'll tell you what, I can't wait to see you as a sponsor at our Nate booth. There you so, go. Hey, <laughs> Thank you guys very much. And we will see you guys next on the crude truth and the energy news beat for Stu Tierley, CEO of the Sandstone group. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.